This is the CW News at 630. Thank you for joining us tonight on the CW News at 630. I'm Brent Solomon in for Chris Thomas. We begin tonight with new developments in that recent officer involved shooting on Richmond South Side. We've now learned that there were children inside of the unit at the Warwick Village Apartments when the violence broke out last night. Curtis McLeod has been following this story since the beginning and he has the latest from police tonight. This is McLeod, CW News. All right, thank you, Curtis. We are learning new information tonight on a deadly crash in Louisa. State police say 18 year old Michael Phillips of Bumpus died at the scene. This all unfolded shortly before nine this morning on Bell Mead Road. Police say Phillips car was traveling north when it crossed over the road, striking the car that 28 year old Sarah Thaw was driving. Thaw had her one year old in that car. She was med flighted to UVA with serious injuries. The toddler made it out unharmed and speed is being considered a factor in that crash. Crash. At this hour, police are searching for the driver that caused a chain reaction at Hole Street at a business that you see behind me. Detectives say three cars were involved. One crashed into the front of Jack Rabbit's convenience store on 35th and Hole. We turn it over to Ashley Monfort now with the very latest into this investigation. DW News. Interesting report, Mike. Thank you. I want you to look at this now. This is the grave of Maggie Walker, the first Bat bank president uh, that was a female conditions at the Evergreen Cemetery though have been concerning for years. Now they're getting renewed attention. A groundskeeper tells us in the past the cemetery has had volunteers, but that's no longer the case. Apparently there are only three people on staff and they may be in need of help. We will seek additional ways to improve our process so parents and students can be clear when it comes to the enrollment process. We have been working on this matter for some time and will continue to fine tune that process so that we may eliminate any misunderstandings in the future. All right, if you are nearing the age of 65, you're probably very aware you will soon be ready for Medicare. What you may not know is that the number on your card is identical to your social security number. A viewer reached out to us after making that very discovery. Now, Gray Hall has some tips to protect your privacy and explains what changes the government is making. W News. Great tips as always. Thank you, Gray. Well, a Richmond obituary goes viral, but for all of the wrong reasons. Was a 104-year-old woman's obituary plagiarized? What her family is saying when you join us after the break. Plus, Louisa High students kick off the school year in a brand new building, four years after an earthquake destroyed their old one. A look inside is next. W News at 6.30. Welcome back, time is 6.41 now. I wanna tell you about a 104 year old who left behind an obituary so moving it went viral. But we now know parts of it are not original at all. The obit seems like it's written by the deceased woman herself, but it's actually written by her daughter, still alive, who copied parts from someone else's obituary. Mike Valerio has an explanation now from the family. All right, Louisa High School students are starting a brand new year in a brand new state of the art facility. The $54 million building opened its doors on the first day of school today after the earthquake destroyed the old building four years ago. Students took classes in trailers while the community helped to rebuild the new school. Now Louisa is welcoming hundreds of students in awe of their new school. I love now the school even has room to expand, fitting another 300 students in the future. Louisa's school district received both state and federal money to help rebuild. In the short term, Brent, it is looking beautiful tomorrow right into the weekend. But for now, you're keeping that humidity down for us, so that's a good thing. Which we also. always love at this time of year. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You bet. All right, well, quarterback Tom Brady back in court today fighting for his right to play the entire upcoming season. This after a four-game suspension for his role in Deflategate. We'll bring you the latest from the courtroom. Plus, is Richmond being dissed by Houston's football team? Find out why the Texans had less than positive things to say about the Redskins training camp. That and more after the break. Have you ever heard of the mobile dating app called Tinder? Well, the company is not too happy with Vanity Fair. The magazine recently published an article on how apps like Tinder are changing how people date. Tinder fired back with a series of tweets attacking the magazine. Tinder says the author never contacted the company for the story and questioned a survey alleging that 30% of its users are married. The Vanity Fair writer responded to Tinder's claims by saying their article isn't even about the app. 
little fight there. All right, an award-winning pooch has passed away. You may remember Uggy from the Oscar-winning film The Artist. Sadly, at 13, his owner says Uggy lost his fight to cancer and had to be put to sleep last week. Uggy won the Palm Dog Award for Best K-9 Actor at the 2011 K-9's Film Festival. Uggy even got to be the first dog to leave his footprints outside the Chinese theater in Hollywood. We'll star NFL quarterback Tom Brady back in the courtroom today as he tries to win an appeal of his four-game suspension over his role in Deflategate. Chris Ballone is gathering more now from New York. Now this season of HBO's Hard Knocks kicked off last night. The Houston Texans are the subject of the show and the team's trip to Richmond was a part of the opening episode. The show heads to Richmond about 40 minutes in and Houston coach Bill O'Brien remarks about a lack of energy before Thursday's lightly attended practice. He also comments about no music being played and tells his team to make up for the lack of noise and emotion. Last night's season premiere ends with a Texans player telling his teammates, let's get out of Richmond with an expletive included. All right. Well, we want you to meet our Scholar of the Week. That's after the break. But first, take a look at your primetime schedule tonight right here on The CW. All right, it's time to meet the Scholar of the Week. Here's Tony Boyd of Petersburg High School. Tony has multiple interests, but she's most passionate about helping children. She says she wants to one day major in nursing with a concentration in pediatrics at Christopher Newport. Congratulations to our Scholar of the Week presented by Urban Views Weekly. We wish her the best. That's all the time we have now, but we want to thank you for joining us. We hope you have a very good night.